Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here. It is time for church. And no matter where you are, uh, whether you're at home here in the Arizona area or you're somewhere else in the States or around the world, we are glad to have you with us as we worship together. The good news is that Jesus is present where you are. He's present with all of us, and we're here to worship him together. Grace to and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I invite you to pray with me as we begin our service tonight. Heavenly Father, it's good to be together, and uh, no matter where we are, no matter when we're watching this, we thank you that right now your spirit is present with us, and we pray that your spirit would fill us, would mold us and shape us and renew us, that we might hear the word you have for us today, that we might worship you, and that we might continue to live as followers of Jesus in this new normal. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, it's so glad to have you with us. My name is Tim Wright. As I mentioned, I'm the senior pastor here at Community of Grace. And we are continuing a series that we started a few months ago now called Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore, Following Jesus into the New Normal. And one of the things that the pandemic has done is changed everything, and it leaves us feeling a bit discombobulated. There's a big word for you. And to be discombobulated oftentimes makes us begin to doubt ourselves. We're not sure what it means to be human anymore. And so we're going to look at a story today where Jesus puts the humanity back into human beings and where Jesus gives a man back his humanity and how he does the same for you and for me. So we're glad you're here to enjoy that. And we're going to start by worshiping together. Uh, if, I, if I could just find the band. I, I, Diane, do you have the band? Apparently the band's in a little box somewhere and they're ready to sing for you. I have heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds, healing brokenness. I feel a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation. Well, welcome again. We are so glad that you are joining us here at Community of Grace in Peoria, Arizona. 
wherever you are physically located. And so I'm Pastor Kathleen, and we're so glad to have this opportunity to worship our God who is faithful. We have a few different ways that you can connect with us. If this is your first time joining us for worship on our online campus, we have a number that you can text. And with this number, you can text a single word. You can text WELCOME to 602-806-9406, and you'll receive some information back about our church, which will help you to get more involved. You can also text the word PRAYER. And when you text that word PRAYER, you can either submit a prayer request, or you can let us know of a pastoral care concern you might have. So please Please feel free to use that number at any time. You may need a better memory than I myself have, um, but that number, you can text that at any time. So we do have a special kids time coming up for you guys. We're going to be watching what I hear is just riveting theatrical work about the story of Esther. And Esther is a, she was a Jewish woman who God worked through to save his people. And so we'll hear that story, and then we'll also have a song that we'll get to participate in called Big House by some of our musicians. So we hope that you will enjoy. Once upon a time, a Jewish woman by the name of Esther was chosen to be the new queen of a powerful kingdom. Her husband, the king, loved her very much, but he didn't know she was Jewish. One of the king's men hated the Jews, and he came up with a plan to hurt them. He put his plan in place and asked the king to okay it. But the king didn't know that the man was up to something evil. The king didn't know that this plan was going to hurt his wife, Esther. Esther's uncle, Mordecai, told Esther about the plan. He told Esther that it was up to her to save her people, the Jews. But Esther was scared. There was a rule in the kingdom that the queen couldn't see her husband, the king, unless he asked to see her. If she were to ask to see him and he didn't want to see her, he could end her life. But her uncle said to her, who knows, but that you have become queen for such a time as this. So even though she was afraid, Esther asked to see the king. And the king was happy to see her. But when he found out about the plan that he'd okayed, and when he realized that it would end up hurting Esther, he was angry. So he put an end to that plan and Esther ended up saving her people, the Jews. God had used her, even though she was afraid, to keep her people safe. The end.
Mayor's house. It's a fun and catchy song, but it gives us an image for God's kingdom, which is full of abundant life for everyone, absolutely everyone. And so we are mindful that God has freed us and desires this abundant life for us and for the entire world. And as we are preparing to receive the offering, it's a good time to be, to be thankful and to also be aware of the fact that, especially in the midst of a pandemic, God's mission to care for all and to love one another continues. And so we are so grateful for the many, many ways that we are being stewards of time, talent, and treasure. And we're so grateful for the ways that you all are participating in this. If you would like to donate money, you can send your checks to our physical address that is there for you on the screen. You can use the QR code to hold your device up and take a picture of that, and it will lead you to our online giving. You can also give your gift through text, or you can visit our website there for you on the screen, and you can follow the instructions there to give that way. So as we are preparing to receive the offering, would you please join me for a word of prayer? Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have freed us from having to worry about earning your love or anything and that you desire to give us your abundant life. Would you please help us to see the world around us as you do? And would you please move us to be compassionate and would you please move us to be generous with those things, the time, the talents, and the treasure which you have entrusted to us? Would you please work through us and use what we have to offer for your glory in this world in which you so love every bit of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pretty amazing grace is what you showed me Pretty amazing grace is who you are I was an empty vessel You filled me up inside And with amazing grace restored my pride Pretty amazing grace is how you saved me And with amazing grace reclaimed my heart the Love in the midst of chaos Calm in the heat of war Showed with amazing grace what love was for you forgave my insensitivity And my attempt to then mislead you You stood beside a wretch like me Your pretty amazing grace Was all I needed Inside the doorway of your chapel Humble and awed by everything I found Beauty and love surround me And freed me from what I fear Asked for amazing grace and you appeared overcame my loss of hope and faith gave me a truth i could believe in you led me to a higher place you showed your amazing grace when grace was what i needed In a mirror I see your reflection And open the book you live on every page I fall and 
you there to lift me You share every road I climb And with amazing grace You ease my mind I came to you with empty pockets first When I returned I was a rich man Didn't believe love could quench my thirst but with amazing grace You showed me that it can Now in your amazing grace I had a vision and From this amazing place I came to be Into the night I wander, wandering aimlessly. I found your amazing grace to comfort me. You overcame my loss of hope and faith, gave me a truth I could believe in. You led me to that higher place, showed me that love and truth and hope and grace were all I needed. I want to tell you before we dive into the message for today how much we miss having you here. And it's been over five months now. And um, all the time, we as a staff are talking about what we need to do to get ready to get back together, and we spent about three hours this week talking about it. And uh, we're making some baby steps. We, we have reset the, uh, the worship center for you so that once we do open the doors, everybody can be safe. We've been ordering signs. We've been ordering masks to hand out in case you forget your mask. And uh, what I can tell you, and I just said this to uh, some of the team who are here, we're going to be opening up sometime between next week and when Jesus comes back. And if you've been looking at what's happening in the world with Phoenix setting record temperatures, and not just setting record temperatures, we're breaking record temperatures every single day. Uh, we've seen blood red suns and blood red moons here. And of course the pandemic and all the stuff happening all around the world, you'd almost get the sense that we're living in the days of the apocalypse and that Jesus will be coming back soon. But I have news for you. Jesus is already here, and he wants to write a new story in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how Jesus shows up in moments like this to give us back our humanity. And so before we talk about it, let's have a quick word of prayer together. God, as we are sitting in our homes, uh, worshiping with our church family all across the country and around the world, uh, as we join with other Christians around the world, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to hear a good word from you. And uh, we need it. We need a word of grace. And so does the world around us. So speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Before he began his career as a gospel singer, Terry Clark served our country in Vietnam in the late 1960s. And like a lot of our vets, he came home a broken man. He had seen the horror that humans could inflict on other human beings. And as a result, it dehumanized him. He was suffering from severe post-traumatic stress syndrome, which they didn't call it back then. But the result was that he checked out of reality. And he checked out of the human race. Here's how he described his experience. He said, I'd seen everything that humans can do, and I had participated in most of it. And I was just so disgusted to be a human being, I couldn't stand it anymore. So I decided to totally reject everything that had anything to do with the human existence of Terry Clark. He got home to Germany, and he was admitted to a psych ward there. And his prognosis was no hope of ever regaining his sanity. In Mark chapter 3, Jesus is in the synagogue. It's the Sabbath day, and he's preaching. Now, as we saw last weekend, the Sabbath day was a holy day for the Jews. It was a sacred day, and it was a day that they honored with their lives. And so over the centuries, a lot of laws had been created 
to protect Jews from breaking the Sabbath, to protect them from working on the Sabbath day because it was a day that was meant to be holy. So it's the Sabbath day, and Jesus is preaching, and in the congregation that day are some of Jesus' critics. They know that Jesus has a habit of breaking the Sabbath, and they want to catch him in the act. And Jesus doesn't disappoint them. In the congregation that day, along with the critics, is a man who has a withered hand. Now, Mark doesn't tell us which hand is withered, but Luke does. Luke is a doctor, and so he'd be aware of such details. And Luke tells us that it was the man's right hand that was withered. And that's significant. Because in Jesus' culture, metaphorically speaking, the right hand was the hand of power. It was the right hand of productivity. It was the right hand of work. It was the right hand that was used to give a blessing. And so what it means for this man is not only has he lost the use of his hand, he's lost his ability in that society to be productive, to provide for his family. He's lost his power. He's essentially been robbed of his manhood. He has been dehumanized by this injury. And to make matters worse, there were people who believed that anything like that, like this deformed hand, was a punishment given by God for some sort of sin this man must have committed. So not only has this man lost the use of his hand, he's lost his ability to provide for his family, probably has to resort to begging, he's been dehumanized, and there are people who look at him as cursed by God. And Jesus sees the man and he calls him up front. Now, Mark doesn't say this, but in my imagination, I think this guy probably snuck into the synagogue and snuck out again without anyone seeing him and probably sat in the shadows if he could because he was so humiliated. This is a man who had been robbed of his humanity. He was embarrassed. And Jesus calls him up and exposes him in front of everyone. And with the man standing there in front of that whole congregation, Jesus asks a provocative question. He says, is it lawful to save a life on the Sabbath? Now again, there were a lot of laws created to protect people from breaking the Sabbath. And one of the laws said that you couldn't fix something that was broken on the Sabbath. You could only keep it from getting worse. So, for example, if you broke your arm on the Sabbath day, you couldn't fix it. You couldn't make it better. You could only keep it from getting worse. To make it better would be a form of work. But the one thing that you could do on the Sabbath was save a life. And so in answer to Jesus' question, is it lawful to save a life on the Sabbath, everybody in the congregation would be shaking their heads saying, yeah, sure, but the question is provocative because this man with the withered hand is standing there, and they know exactly what Jesus is getting at. But the thing is this, this man is in no imminent danger of losing his life. He's probably had this withered hand for a long time, and so Jesus could heal him the next day or the day after. You can't make something better on the Sabbath. You can only keep it from getting worse. So if Jesus were to heal that man's hand on the Sabbath, by a strict interpretation of the law, he would be breaking the Sabbath. And so it's a provocative question. So Jesus asked him, is it lawful to save a life on the Sabbath? And nobody answers. And Mark says, Jesus stared at them in anger. His heart was deeply grieved for their hearts. Their lack of humanity, their lack of compassion for this man had been, who had been dehumanized for so much of his life, their lack of humanity for him and choosing a strict rule over that man's humanity stuns Jesus. And so he says to the man in front of all of them, stretch out your hand. And the man stretches out his hand and his hand is healed. But not only that, when Jesus heals that man's hand, he gives that man his life back. He raises that man back to life again. He saves that man because he has given that man back his humanity. He has given him back his manhood. He has given him back the ability to be productive and to provide for his family. Jesus saves that man's life by rehumanizing him in that moment. One day as Terry Clark is sitting on the psych ward in Germany, Jesus showed up. And in talking to a, recorder, a reporter years later, here's what Terry Clark said about that experience. Jesus said, Terry, I know how you feel. 
I've seen everything human beings have ever done, but I want you to understand the difference in our response to that. You've decided not to be a human being, and I've decided to become one. An overwhelming sense of God's love began a transformation in his life. Terry says, I was instantly drowned in a passion and a love that eclipsed my disgust and humiliation. In that moment, I knew why Jesus went to the cross. Shortly after that experience, that encounter with Jesus, Terry was re-examined, and the diagnosis went from no hope to getting better, and one week later, he walked out of that psych ward because Jesus showed up. And Jesus, by his grace and his love, rehumanized Terry Clark. Just as he had done for that man 2,000 years ago, he said to Terry metaphorically, stretch out your hand and live because I love you and you're worth dying for. We live in a world that is constantly looking to dehumanize us, constantly robbing us of our dignity and our value, our belief in ourselves, trying to take away from us this sacred vision that we are created in the image of God. It happens through storylines like failure or broken relationships or mistakes or vitriol that is thrown at us because we disagree with someone politically or anger. There are all kinds of reasons why we find ourselves constantly doubting ourselves. Sometimes this stuff is thrown at us and it dehumanizes us. Sometimes we throw it at other people and we dehumanize them and in the process we dehumanize ourselves. In this COVID world, we don't know what it means to be normal or human anymore. And the anger that we see all around us is a sign that we're losing our sense of what it means to be human beings. And into that storyline comes Jesus, just as he did for Terry Clark, just as he did for that man 2,000 years ago. Into that storyline comes Jesus with a brand new storyline. And Jesus wants to tell you that God is on the move, that God is up to something new in your life, that God has come to re-root you in the person of Jesus in who you really are, to re-root you in this sacred vision that you are created in the image of God, that you have worth and value. And so after being beat up all week long by the world, Jesus breaks in and he says to you today, stretch out your hand and live. Stretch out your hand because you're loved. Stretch out your hand because you matter to me. Stretch out your hand because you're worth dying for. Stretch out your hand because you've been created in the image of God. Stretch out your hand because I claim you as my own. You are belong to me. You are a son, you are a daughter of the Lord of the universe. Stretch out your hand and live. But it's not only we as human beings who find ourselves being dehumanized from time to time. We live in a world that is dehumanizing people groups. Entire people groups who are dehumanized based on the color of their skin, the language that they speak, where they come from, their socioeconomic uh, lifestyle. And there are systems, there are policies in place that dehumanize people. There are things that we say that dehumanize them. And what the story of Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 3 is that Jesus stands in solidarity with them. That Jesus stands against any system, any policy, any word that devalues groups of people based on their skin color or their language or where they come from or their socioeconomic status. That Jesus stands on the side of equality, of justice, compassion, and grace. And the kingdom of God comes not only to write a, a new storyline for us as human beings, individually, but for the human race, for people groups, tribes, and ethnicities. Jesus comes to rehumanize all of us, to help us all see that by the power of his grace we're created in the image of God. John, in Revelation, paints a picture of that for us. And he says it this way. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. That's the storyline Jesus is writing 
where all of us, no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, are rehumanized by the grace of Jesus. And so Jesus is writing a new storyline right now in your life. The one who became human so that he could rehumanize you is to stretch out your hand and live. You belong to me. You have worth and value. And the one who became a human being to enter into solidarity with the outcasts and the poor and those who are racially dehumanized, Jesus says to you and to me, stretch out your hand and live and join me in the fight, the grace-based fight of fighting for all people, for the equality of all people, for treating all people with dignity and respect no matter what their color, no matter what their language, no matter where they come from. Jesus rehumanizes you so that you can love your neighbors as you love yourself. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we live in a world that is constantly trying to rob us of our dignity and value. A world that says that we're not good enough. A world that says that because of the color of my skin, I'm less than human. Because the language I speak isn't right. And we thank you, Jesus, that you came to say that that's not true that you came to put the human back into humanity. And so may that grace now capture us, rehumanize us, that we might bring grace to rehumanize your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, would you please proclaim with me what we believe as a church through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Would you please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As God's Spirit gathers us across time and space, hear these words proclaimed and see these words proclaimed to each of you the body of Christ given for you. And again, gathered across time and space as we prepare to receive the grape juice or the wine, hear and see these words proclaimed to you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Thanks again for being with us today for our worship service. It's always good to at least touch base with each other uh, through these different mediums of Facebook and YouTube. I uh, want to remind you that every week, every weeknight, we're together. And uh, so Monday night, we're going to have our prayer time at 6 o'clock. Tuesday night, we're going to do something special, right, Diane? We're going to be good with this video. Uh, she has no idea what I'm talking about. We're going to do a video 
on Tuesday night, I interviewed a pastor friend of mine, uh, Pastor Peter Perry, and he made a trip back in September uh, down to the border and learned some very, very interesting things about immigration, which is an important topic for us here in Arizona, but things that we don't often hear in the media. And we talk about it from a Christian perspective, and I think you're going to enjoy that, that uh, video uh, that we do together, or interview, because I, I learned a lot. I know you will, too. That's Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we're going to do our Bible study, and we're going to look at the text we just looked at. We're going to go deeper. I'm going to go into some things that I didn't have time for during the service. So that's Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Thursday night at 6 o'clock, we're going to have our worship time, or singing worship time, with Tony and Lisa. And then Friday night, that big Bafo family prayer time with Pastor Kathleen and her family, and uh, they're just lighting it up every Friday night. People love seeing those guys praying, doing Faith Five together, so that's Friday night. And then next weekend, we have worship again, and uh, next weekend, we're going to continue our journey through the Gospel of Mark, and we're going to talk about what it looks like to follow a nutcase. You heard that right, what it looks like to follow a nutcase. And that'll be our story next week. So some things we want you to know about. Again, if you didn't get a chance uh, to text to us, uh, to connect with us, 602-806-9406, 602-806-9406. Text the word welcome and hit send. We'll get back to you. Text the word prayer and hit send, and we will follow up with you with whatever prayer request you have. And, or hit the word text and hit send. And uh, No, not text and hit send. Events and hit send. <laughs> That's all right. It's COVID brain. Uh, events and hit send. And uh, that will give you a list of all the different events coming on up. BoldRecklessGrace.org. BoldRecklessGrace.org is where you'll find anything and everything you need to know about the community of grace. A couple other things we want you to know about. There's going to be this great thing for women coming up on Saturday. And it's from 9 to 11 o'clock. It's going to be on Zoom. Self-care in the context of community. Uh, Breed is going to be leading that. If you would email children at boldrecklessgrace.org, children at boldrecklessgrace.org. She will send you the Zoom link. And that sounds like a fantastic experience. Uh, she led another seminar for women a few weeks ago or months ago, and uh, it was just great. This is going to be good too, 9 to 11 on Saturday. And then we're going to be starting this thing called Family Time, and uh, there's going to be more information on our website. But it's a chance on the second and fourth Sundays uh, for families, grandparents, parents, to do some interactive things together with their children around faith. And uh, we want to keep pay, pushing faith back into the home. And Breed is going to do a demo for you at, uh, on Sunday the, 11th, uh, Sunday the 30th at 11 o'clock. And uh, that will be on Zoom. So again, children at boldrecklessgrace.org. Children at boldrecklessgrace.org. And look at this, a children's musical theater camp video Zoom. Look at that. That's fantastic. So here's what's going to happen. We need to create some more kids' videos for our children's time, and we're going to put together a kids' choir to help us create some videos. So they're going to be seen in the worship service. So we're going to do this for three Wednesday nights, September 9th, 16th, and 23. They're going to try to crank out two to three videos with the kids. And so if your kids like to sing, if your kids want to be a part of the kids' time, uh, we'd love to have them. Uh, and uh, you can see contact Lisa, singling1 at gmail.com, singling1 at gmail.com, or go to boldrecklessgrace.org, boldrecklessgrace.org for more information. I think we have given you about 16 different websites and email addresses to look at. Uh, just go to boldrecklessgrace.org. It's all there, all right, boldrecklessgrace.org. Again, thank you for being with us. If you enjoyed the service, please hit share onto your page. That way other people uh, can listen in to what God is up to here at Community of Grace. We would appreciate that. Look forward to being with you all next week, 6 o'clock. And now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good week. Wear that mask. <laughs>